All right, let's take a look at an antenna today. Uh, you've probably seen these before. Uh, this is fresh out of the package. This is a GPS antenna. Um, and you might have wondered how can such a thin, small little thing receive uh, GPS signals? Uh, what's, what, what is this thing? Um, and so let's go ahead and tear one of these apart. I've already done that over here, so. Uh, here's one. Let me zoom down to it. And uh, there is a uh, can on the back, so I've desoldered that. And underneath it is actually some circuitry. You might not have known there's circuitry here. Uh, so there's circuitry under there. And then there's the other part, this part here. And it is a little hard to disassemble, but there's this piece and there's the PC board and this double sticky tape on the back of the uh, of this antenna and it's it's just double sticky taped onto onto this part and there's one electrical connection and then it looks like it's silver right it looks like there's silver on this side and silver on this side and it feels like it's made out of uh, ceramic it feels it feels heavy like a like a domino um, and uh, there's a solder connection here and there's a little pin sticking out this side. So that pin goes through and does solder to this side. And then there's this uh, silver thing over here too with the double sticky tape on it. Um, but it makes no electrical contact. If you look to see any way that this PC board can make electrical contact to that there, there isn't one. Now this is a, a two-sided PC board and this is a ground plane here. So there is a capacitively coupled uh, connection to this um, and so this is a, a ground plane and uh, it's very close and so it's capacitively coupled to this back and so it probably ends up being ground electrically um, but yeah let's uh, let me change the lens here okay let's take a look at a couple things here uh, this is the um, PC board that was in there and we have uh, the coax coming in here. It is used both AC and DC. DC comes in to power this thing. So the DC comes in, goes through this resistor, comes up and around and goes into the amplifier. So this is the, the DC path to supply power. And then there's a uh, connection right here, which is where that um, connector, connection to the antenna goes. Then there's a capacitor and inductor in series that goes into the, the uh, into the amplifier. The output of the amplifier is capacitively coupled back into the coax. You need this uh, capacitor here because you have DC on the uh, on the line, so this is uh, AC coupled coupled signal back in. On the back side is just ground, okay, and we have our antenna, which is just the thickness of of material. Uh, so there's a dielectric constant for that ceramic, and so the electrical length is longer than the physical length um, because the speed of light is slowed down by that dielectric. And then we have two contacts, top and bottom. And if you notice, the contact to the uh, to the square is not in the center; it's actually offset a little ways, and that's done on purpose in, in the design process of these antennas. This is called a patch antenna, and we'll take a little bit. We'll take a bit, another look at patch antennas. Um, so we've seen we've seen what's going on inside here. Uh, this is covered with a shield, uh, and uh, we'll take a look at the data sheet for that part, and then we'll take a look at some design documents for uh, patch antennas. So here is the uh, data sheet for the chip that's being used. It's the Max uh, two six five nine. Let's see if we can't zoom in a little bit more here. And it is a GPS uh, low noise amplifier, so it's made just for this purpose. Um, 1.6 to 3.6 volts, only four milliamps. Uh, let's see here, ultra low noise figure, 0.8 dB noise figure, that's pretty low. Uh, 20 dB gain, so it is kind of what you would think it would be. and. Uh, Here's how it's used. Oops, and we saw that in ours. The RF comes into a capacitor inductor and goes in. The DC comes here on pin four, 
And uh, RF goes out. The logic control is not being used. It's probably just floating or high or something. Um, but there you go. That's the chip that's being used. So here is an antenna. I don't, I don't know if this is the exact one being used, uh, but this is a Kyocera version. Uh, ceramic patch antenna. Uh, this one says active, so this one must have an amplifier built. Yeah, this one probably has an amplifier built into it as well. So it's probably not exactly this one, but we can kind of look at this one for the size and what it does. Um, it is a patch antenna, and it is ceramic, so of course it's Kyocera doing it. Kyocera kind of, kind of owns, uh, owns the ceramic market, now part of AVX. Um, what do we have here? A 50-ohm impedance. Yeah, operation voltage, yeah, so this has an amplifier built into it, but it uh, it is interesting. Um, here are some radiation patterns. It's pretty isotropic. <laughs> a little bit of a little bit of forward gain, but not much. And we can look at the mechanical dimensions. Let's see, a, yeah, it's the same size, one inch by one inch. The actual antenna itself is about 23 millimeters square. Um, so yeah, there you go. That's what this one is. All right, let's take a look at um, another document that I found. So if you ever want to study a uh, field um, or a new, a new thing that's new to you, Sometimes um, theses are very good, either a, a, a PhD thesis or sometimes even a master's degree thesis um, are very good things to read. Uh, so this one is um, being done for patch antennas and uh, 2011. Now, this is for a master of science degree. And here's the fellow, give him credit. All right, so the great thing about a thesis is you start out um, assuming the reader has no knowledge of these things. And so you, you, you begin your thesis writing a lot of preliminary things to get people up to speed of these things. So, uh, you know, why you want this thing. Um, so so um, chapter one, introduction to antenna. See, chapter one is all about antennas in general, not patch antennas, just antennas in general. So if you want to learn about antennas, this is a great introduction. And then microstrip antennas, how you might analyze them, what type of parameters are, how you would design them, maybe make arrays out of them. Um, so it starts out with a dipole, runs through some simple equations, uh, talks about the E and H fields, uh, radiation patterns of things, um, what it means to be directional, how you define that. Um, and uh, yeah, great, great introduction to just things. So this is very, very nice. I'll put a, a link down below um, if you want to read this document to Microstrip Antennas. Uh, so there's all types of ways to feed patches. You can have a 50 ohm line coming into an inductor and then it feeds a uh, feeds a patch um, and so there's kind of these things now this is sort of the one we've got right we've got a ground plane and then we have a coax and it, it goes through the board and then attaches to the top and you can see that it's off center from the from the from the center um, uh, here's one that has an aperture uh, yeah uh, talks about field lines in the dielectric um, and then lots more equations. I'm not going to pretend that I just see if I was another YouTuber, I might read this and then spout it back to you and sound real smart. Like, yeah, I've known this all along. No, I don't know this stuff. Um, I'll let you read it and educate yourself. Um, but what I did find interesting is at the end, we're only halfway through here. Let me see if I can, if I can go down because there's just a whole bunch of okay I found it it is uh, 5.2 example GPS receiver patch antenna um, 
And so he talks about, you know, you, you need to be able to receive antennas. Um, and uh, he talks about various uh, frequencies. The frequency of interest would be uh, 1.5 gigahertz. Uh, he's going to be using a dielectric constant of 4.1, a thickness of dielectric of 1.6 millimeters. And so he has these design parameters. He comes out with a square that's 24, milli 24 millimeters by 24 millimeters. Now, the one that we have is 23 millimeters square. So this antenna is very, very, very close to the type of antenna that we have. And it's going to be taking a look at this. And you can see the, the, the input is here offset by Y0. Um, and he has a bunch of plots in here about... Um, uh, the uh, return loss for the uh, matching. So it's tailored to be right on the frequency of interest. Um, input impedance. He has a bunch of cool uh, plots of different types and things. So you can read through this and uh, learn all about patch antennas and learn why that uh, little thing is offset and things like that. So... Like I said, I'll leave this below. Here's some S parameters. This is what your vector network analyzer gives you. Um, scattering parameters. S11, uh, S21, all those type of things. Yeah, very, 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 very cool. Here's a Smith chart. You can see that it uh, uh, comes into this 50 ohm at the center. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be uh, a resonant right around the frequencies of interest. Uh, here's the antenna that was measured. Um, here's what happens when you change the dielectric constant and things. So it's very, 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 very nicely written uh, written thesis here. All right. So uh, there you go. A little bit about patch antennas. You know as much as I do. Read, the, read this and you'll know more than I do. Um, and uh, yeah, I thought that would be interesting. <laughs>